I'm your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. I just had a wonderful fellowship stroke retreat with my dear spiritual son, Reverend Samson Bodger. He's a general overseer of his own ministry, but when I want to take hard decisions, I consult him. I want to tell you about Ruth. You must know where you are from. You must know the level you are in at a particular time. Ruth was from Moab. I don't think she was a poor person's child. But she now found herself in Bethlehem going to glean. She left a mother-in-law at home that was hungry. She went out to glean because things were not okay. There's one problem with most people. They never face reality. When I sold the hospital and came to Ugeli to do ministry, I had to face reality. I was no longer going to practice medicine. There was no hospital. My income was going to be limited. I didn't cling to my status. But I needed to take care of a family and children I had raised up in the elite class. They were used to tissue paper, they were used to toilet soap, they were used to all kinds of comfort. So, when I went to preach, I had very good hosts, and they include the following people, Mrs. Evans Daniels of CPM Ojikelin Den, and the husband, Evans Daniels. I had another great couple, Reverend John Eze, and the wife um, at City of Joy Bible Church, and several other ministers of the gospel. One of the things I realized was that I left a family at home. I left children that I must not let them feel bad and angry about my selling the hospital and going into ministry. So I was very frugal with everything I had. When I went to preach, they would give me two things of sardine, bread, milk, bonvita, and several others. I knew I left a family at home, and so I will not eat breakfast. I will keep the sardine. I will keep the bread. When they brought food, I would take a little bit and freeze the rest. When they brought soap, I would use only one tablet of soap for the four days I will stay there. Use one roll of tissue. I will keep the rest for my children. That was how I accumulated materials for my children and my wife to be able to have a level of comfort so that they will not be angry with me and not regret having a father that sold his hospital and go into ministry. And so I will leave Abba very early, 4 a.m. I had left, so that the food will still be frozen and I will get home on time. You see, one of the problems of motivational speakers, they will tell you, very fantastic stories of how they started small and how they reached where they are now. They will not tell you the process. They will not tell you the secrets of the little things they did of the sufferings they went through. I don't need to impress you. I don't have anything to gain to impre by impressing you. I have a lot to gain by telling you the reality. I managed my resources well. I lived a very frugal life. I had only two shoes at one time. I don't wear wristwatches. I don't wear necklaces. I don't wear expensive clothes. Till today, it is because I was thinking for the future. I was thinking about today. I have this large piece of land here. Everything you see here, a great percentage of it was bought by the honorarium I got from churches. I went to preach someday with some preachers somewhere in Nigeria. 
and they gave us honorarium. They used their own to buy electronics. Then CD players were just new. They bought. I used my own to buy paper. I printed four books. And I sold 800,000 Naira worth of books from the 40,000 Naira they gave to me. My mates were entering airport taxis, they would charter taxis to go and preach. I was taking commercial buses, squeezing myself with the people. I was thinking of today. Don't eat your future now. Pay the price now so that you can win the P-R-O-I-Z-E in future. Don't try to impress people. Don't live a flamboyant life when you come from a poor background. Today, I preach when I want to preach. I go out to preach when I want to go out to preach. I stay in the best hotels because I have evidence to show for what I got from people. The goodwill of the churches I went to preach. Several of them don't invite me again, but I am busy doing what I need to do here. This background you are seeing, before the end of this year, you will see a big building here. It is the little sums of money that will come into my hand that I will gather together to build it. The Bible says, go to the ant and be wise. As small as an ant, they build a tower as high as 30-something feet in the savannah. That means a human being is supposed to build a house that is 11 kilometers high. The ant is very wise. It grows fungal gardens inside the termitarium because of raining season. Are you planning for your raining season? I speak to those of you overseas that will listen to this video. Don't waste your life overseas. The world in Africa is waiting for you. I must return with an evidence is a book I wrote. Have evidence for every money that enters your hand. God bless you. I'm your friend, Dr. Charles uh, Pocky.